Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Everybody ought to praise his name. I greet you tonight with Jesus' joy, and I simply say to you, the joy of the Lord is our strength. And I'm so grateful for each of you. This is Apostle Addie Rawls at our Midweek Manor for New Generation Christian Church and Assist Apostolic Ministries, 4423 Wilson's Mill Road, right here in Smithfield, North Carolina. And I thank you tonight for those of us in our virtual audience and those who have joined me in the sanctuary for meeting me here tonight for our midweek manor. Amen. And I'm grateful for every one of you who have joined us. I pray that your week has gone well. I've received some praise reports this week. We've been in prayer and thinking about our sisters and brothers who have been affected by the storm and even for the storm that may be coming, that God will protect and keep them. And we are just continuing to ask the Lord to open up the hearts of all of us that we might be our brothers and our sisters keeper. And I'm so grateful for the opportunity to serve. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you tonight for those who have gathered with us for our midweek manor. God, we thank you because we don't take this for granted, but it is another opportunity that we have to share out of your word. We continue to pray to you, O Lord, that every word of our mouth and every meditation of our heart would be acceptable to you, O Lord. You are our strength and you are our redeemer. And tonight, we just want to say thank you. We thank you, God, for we even come with the plea as I ministered on Sunday, creating me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. So, God, we come tonight. We want to be used by you. We want to make ourselves available for your glory and for your honor. We thank you for keeping us all day long to this moment in time. So God, now we pray in Jesus' name that our ears will be open and our hearts ready to receive what the Spirit is saying to the church. Thank you for all that you are and all that you continue to do for us. And we continue to praise your holy and your righteous name. We thank you and we glorify you. In Jesus' name we pray and give thanks. And the people of God say amen, amen, and amen. We've been studying out of God's power to help hurting people. The editor is Dr. Colleen Burchett, and we have gone through this this year. So it has been a blessing, and I understand that the year is coming to an end as we enter our last quarter. So we know we're going to finish this, and then we're going to move into some other areas of study and continue to to press on God. I just want to thank for every praise report. I had a praise report yesterday of someone where they went in to remove part of the lung. But when they got in, they saw what they needed was right at the muscle. So they didn't have to do that. God is so great, so, so gracious to us. And we are so very grateful for what God is doing. So I give him praise tonight that because it truly could have been the other way. But God saw fit to intervene and to bless, and I give him praise for that. So tonight, we're going to talk about a new chapter. Last week, we were on God's power over fear, and tonight, we're going to talk about God's power over abandonment. How many people we know um, feel somewhat abandoned, uh, left, or, or, or forgotten, um, cast, it, cast away? Amen. And so we're going to talk about that tonight and figure out ways we can assist people in overcoming it. Thank you for joining us to our G Live Worldwide audience and to those present. Amen. As we go forth in the name of the Lord. Um, our base scripture, there are several places we're going to go tonight, but I want to get here. In the midst of you feeling abandoned, I want to remind us of this basic scripture, and it's in Luke 10, verse number 27. And he answered, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your strength and with all your mind and your neighbor as yourself. So in the midst of us feeling unloved, forgotten, forsaken, cast away, we're still commanded by the scripture to love the Lord God with all our heart, all our soul, all our strength and our mind. And then after we've done all of that, turn around and love your neighbor as you love yourself. Mm -hmm. 
I found out most people fundamentally have an issue with loving themselves. We've been so programmed to think that it's selfish to care about yourself that we don't understand that we have to love ourselves. And if we love ourselves, there are certain things that we are prepared to do to take care of ourselves. I've asked the Lord to help me be a greater steward over me now than I may have been the first 60 years of my life um, that I take care of what God has entrusted me to have so that I can demonstrate my love for me. Amen. It didn't say love yourself greater than anybody else, but it says when you love God with all, then it will assist you in loving your neighbor. We may spend more time loving selves, loving neighbors, and don't love God. And so our focus must be on our love for God. And so in this season of my life, I love him. I love him. I'm falling in love with him more and more each day. And I continue to love on him because he has always loved on me. He's always accepted me. So for those who struggle with abandonment, I just want to whisper to you a secret, and that is God loves you. He loves you. And as much as people try to to say what God doesn't like, I want to ask them sometimes what gives you the authority to determine what God likes or don't like or what God loves and don't love. The Bible said he even loved the sinner man. Mm -hmm. We're so gracious to say that we only love those who are like us, those we know, those who are part of the household of faith, and that's good. But we got to learn how to love even our enemies. Amen. Amen. And so tonight we're going to talk about this feeling of abandonment and how it can layer itself. Now, the text gives several examples, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time with that, but there are, are frequent times where people count themselves and their own issues to always be more important than the people that we profess to love. Amen. You can't love yourself better than you love your neighbor because the text said, love your neighbor as yourself. And so we want to always um, separate or part partition out what love is and how do we describe love and how do we equate it when, in essence, um, when you um, profess to love self more than you love your neighbor, then in essence, you're really saying, I'm going to love myself and I'm abandoning my neighbor. Mm. Amen. Amen. So our text is going to talk about this. So, um, and this is a great week to have this because the common denominator is this. You have to love others in addition to loving yourself. Amen. And if there's ever been a time, all of these examples in the text, there was an example about a mother who had to work, but then she prioritized her social life greater than her children's life. And as her children grew older, the son prioritized what he wanted to greater than his younger siblings. And neighbors are watching this, and nobody's doing anything about this. And so we, in, we continue with a cycle of abandonment, a cycle of not loving and not demonstrating love and not putting our love in action. But I want to say, let's make this modern day. Um, Hurricane Helene. Here we are now. Do we love our family and friends in Tennessee, in Florida, in Georgia, in the mountains of North Carolina, in Nash County, Edgecombe County, as much as we love ourselves? Mm -mm. So the question becomes, what are we willing to do to offer assistance? Some of us try to think of all the great big things we could do, but have you whispered a prayer consistently yeah, and constantly on their behalf that God will open doors? Have you prayed for those people that are missing? Have you prayed for those people who have lost everything, people who have had life savings? And, you know, there are people who live in the mountains, but a whole lot of people, just like people have places at the beach, have we prayed for those victims of hurricane where their homes are sitting on the edge of the beach which was a beautiful undertaking, but now the, the tide and the 
erosion of sand, all this stuff, engaged climate change, etc., is causing things to be destroyed. So things that people build their lives trying to build up in a moment of time. So then, um, then those of us that may not experience, we like to put ourselves on a pedestal instead of just saying, Lord, I thank you that it wasn't me, but it doesn't still make me any better than those that it was. That's right. So what are we willing to do to show love, to demonstrate love in action? Love by talk is cheap, but are you willing to walk an extra mile with me? Are you willing to lay down your life so that um, I can be benefited, I can be encouraged? Have you thought about that, that maybe somebody just needs to open up a card, a kind card? Um, I received an invitation from someone, and it was a beautiful um handwritten invitation that said somebody thought about wanting to invite me because they took the time to write it out. Not that people don't think about you in some other ways, but somebody took the time to write to express an invitation. And so I said, wouldn't it be good to take the time to try to be there? Because it was that important that the person would write out I would love to see you. I would love, I want to invite you to be there. So it's important to think about. Um, it's not always, um, we don't all live lives of convenience. My life has never been really convenient. I don't always seek to satisfy my own personal gratification. But I have tried in my lifetime to make a difference in somebody's life by giving them the gift of time. I can't cause their time to be increased, but I can take my time and say to them, my time, you're worth me taking the time. Think about that song. Jesus thought we were all worth saving, so he came and into our lives. And so I just want to say tonight, if there's ever been a season now where we ought to be thinking about each other, now is the time that you ought to really think about each other and stop abandoning. And I'm learning to be bold with some stuff. Amen. I'm learning to sound deep with you and say, hey, you know what I think about it? You get excited about it. What you get ready to say about it? I said, this is what I think about it. And then everybody's on the edge of the seat. What, what, what are you getting ready to say? Do you think about this situation? I said, it's none of my business. And it's not yours either. So therefore, if we take our time and mind our business and take our time and leave somebody else's business alone, well, uh, life would be so much better for a whole lot of folk. Amen. I don't need to be a part of the stress that people experience because I'm in somebody else's business. My Hello, Lord. pews, chairs, whatever I got in here. And so it is important for us to... to to learn how to be there for one another and be present. And sometimes presence is not equated by my physical presence, but even my ability to listen. Amen. Amen. And I don't know why people think folk are slow. <laughs> you know when people like you, and you yeah. know when they don't. That, yeah, amen. So amen. stop being slow. Um, people would demonstrate just what they feel. I found that to be true. All right, so tonight we want to talk about God's power over abandonment. Y'all with me? Amen. All right, let me define abandonment so we know some basic concepts, and I got some more scriptures I want to add to it, but I want to give you a basic definition. This comes out of our text. Abandon is defined as to withdraw support or help from, especially in spite of a duty, allegiance, or responsibility. Abandon means to give up by leaving or ceasing to operate or inhabit, especially as a result of danger to another impending threat. It means to surrender one's claim or right to give it up or to desist from or cease trying to continue. Wow, sounds a lot. Then they gave another example that sometimes abandonment is not created by a person's intent to abandon. It may come as a result to a natural, unavoidable event of some kind. And I wrote right here in my notes, hurricane. 
So I can't even begin to talk about how people feel when you find yourself a victim of something that you really didn't cause to happen. And you're trying to, to decipher or figure out, why am I in this position? How did I land at this place? And then the second question comes, now that I'm in this position, what am I going to do? It's one question. And the second question is, what am I supposed to do? And so I really believe um, that if we will focus more on what, is, what are we supposed to do, what's the right thing. And in the midst of all of this, have you heard the deaths related to the storm? There's some people that are fam favorites that they lost their lives in the course of this time, not because of that, but some folk that we grew up with. I'm sitting here thinking, man, I grew up watching John Amos on Good Times. Mm -hmm. That was a part of us. Mm -hmm. We wanted to hear what was going on with JJ and Thelma and, and, and the little son, Michael, I believe was his name, mm -hmm. and Florida and James and Waloma and Penny. And, you know, these are the things we grew up on. We, 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 we gathered our week around the happiness that knowing that that family was like a lot of our families. They were eating out of pot porridge pot and it didn't taste good but you made the best out of what you had and we celebrated the times when we had more so I believe sometimes in the face of all of these disasters and the things that may be happening in life maybe it's time for us to go back to the simple way of living the simple way of life the time of appreciating those that you have in your life those that have been there for you and know that sometimes things will go back around amen as children appreciate Appreciate your parents and then as parents appreciate your children because there may come a season in your life as a parent that you may need your children and there may come a time in the life of your children as they're growing up and being nurtured they need the parents and one of the things that our lesson is going to talk to tonight about is how do you even get to the point where you, where parents feel abandoned because their children are growing up they're no longer what we thought they were and so we want to look at some text and some scripture um, I'm going to use an example out of Matthew, but let me give you a few more texts. Um, Matthew chapter 22, verse 37, and she's not going to go there, but also Mark, Mark 12 and 30 and Matthew 19 and 19. But if you look at Matthew 22 and 37. And he said to him, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. It's back at us again. So Matthew 22 and 37 is same as Luke utters to us. It says, love the Lord with all. That's what that simply says to us. Are we loving God with all? Or are we loving God with some or a teeny bit or a little wheezy bit? Where, where do we demonstrate our love to God? Amen. Then it goes a little further, verse 38. This is the great and the first commandment. All right, read. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. So not only do you love God, we need to love self and love neighbor. All right, so you need to do a triangle. I love God, I love myself, and I love my neighbor. And if you want to do it as a Venn diagram, everything is interconnected. I can't love God without loving my neighbor. And I can't love my neighbor if I don't know how to love myself because I love God. That making sense? So if you do Venn diagrams, there's circles that interconnect. Love God, love self, love neighbor. And all of it's interconnected because there are seasons when all of us should be touching God and within that, we should be touching one another because we're there. So when you draw the middle circle, you need to draw the other two circles right in the, the midst of the middle circle because we're all interconnected together. And so, um, basic teaching, basic concept. Love God. Do you really love God? Do we love him? 
And if I love God, then I'm able to love myself and love my neighbor. Amen. Amen. All right. Some of us got it. Some of us don't. Love God, love self, and love neighbor. Now, the question was asked by the Pharisees, being a lawyer, to Jesus who was teaching, what is love? Don't allow people to question your love for God, yourself, or others. Amen. Amen. Love God, love self, and love others. All right, y'all with me? And it's important to love God because we're going to get to a place called Psalm 37, 25 through 26. I have been young, and now I'm old. Yet yeah, I have that, not that, that's a process right there. We can learn a lot of lessons from young. But some of us who now are more seasoned hmm. ought to have some understandings too. That's right. I believe we've become so distracted with life itself that we don't understand that life is a process and it in evidence is a process of growth. It is the season now. People been in church all their lives and they're drinking milk. My Lord. And you know they're drinking milk because you're looking at their behavior. Yes, Lord. We think we eat meat, mm. but when you play childish games, what did the Bible say about that? When I was a child, I thought as a child, and now that I'm older, I've learned how to what? Put away childish things. Mm -hmm. All right? So the text says, I've been young, now I'm old. But in the midst of all of this, watch this. Yet I've not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. Every time, can I share a secret? That I articulate that we're preparing ourselves to be a blessing through feeding and assisting others, and we're going to do what we have to do to make it happen, the Lord sends blessings this way. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like he reminds me, can I help you, that he's putting me in a place called beneath an open heaven. Yes, Jesus. And because we're under an open heaven, that when we speak under an open heaven, we have the ability to decree and declare. It's the same authority that was given to Adam and Eve in the garden. God placed them somewhere and said, I've now given you dominion and authority. See, when you're about kingdom work, God will give you dominion and authority to call into existence. So while I'm sitting waiting, saying, if we got to do it this way, we're going to prepare ourselves to do it. The Lord said, no, I have laid up some stuff. Mm -hmm. Huh? Cattle on thousand. Amen. The earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof and everything and everyone that dwells yes, in. Yes, so Lord. then he opens those doors that no one can close. Amen. He makes a way because he is the way. Yes, he is. And so the text reaffirms to us that instead of me feeling abandoned and backed into a corner, God is saying, I am with you always even until the end oh, yes. don't forget your authority to speak and decree and declare that's why i keep telling people speak life stop talking about your ailments stop talking about what you're experiencing or going through but open up your mouth and speak life i'm gonna live i'm gonna make it my back gonna get better my knee gonna get better my toe getting ready to get better amen that things are going to get better i decree and declare that i can't stop at importunity I need to move towards the door of opportunity. Amen. Importunity is a stumbling block. It's something that prevents you from getting to where you go. But I decree and declare, I thank God for the opportunity. And I ain't got to bow down to Baal to receive what God has for us. Hallelujah. I've been young. Now I am old. Yet. Tell your neighbor yet. 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 
I have not what? Seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. Can I give you another text for this? Your eyes have not seen. Your ears have not heard. Neither have it entered into your heart the things that God has prepared for him, you, especially those of us who love his appearing. That means I'm not afraid for God to show up. Amen. Some people don't want God to show up because he's going to catch you with your work not done. Well, well, well. But he will show up on time. Yes, he will. So I've not seen the righteous forsaken or his children begging for bread. Amen. So I know sometimes y'all say they got bread again. That's because you don't have to beg for it. That part. <laughs> he giving you bread. And when you go looking, I see somebody say, oh, wow, there's that cinnamon bread. That's that raisin bread. Oh, is that some of that bread out there? That's the way he does. And watch this. Watch verse 26 because we don't even read that one when we want to holler that scripture. He is ever lending generously. Ever lending generously. So why do you feel abandoned if he already made a promise to you that I won't forsake you, nor your seed, mm. and you ain't going to beg bread? That's right. And he says, he is ever lending generously. It's a good text right here. I need to mark it. Y'all know what I'm getting ready to do, but I got to finish Sunday. He's ever lending generously, and guess what? And his children become a blessing. See, a lot of us miss it because we're receiving, we're receiving the promise. But when you get the promise, we're tucking it in. Well, my Lord. Hiding it, packing it away. But the Bible said, when I bless you and your seed, then I understand that I've given to you generously. But the word that's ironic is the word lending. So the lending says to us, what I possess still doesn't belong to me because the earth is the Lord and the fullness thereof. So the same way God gave me this, yeah, 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 yeah. he'll give me that. That's right. So if you make provision for me now, remember the text two weeks ago, sufficient for this day is what I've given to you, then a lot of us are storing up a whole lot for tomorrow when God said, if you would just be thankful for what I've given you today, then I also would give you on tomorrow. Well, well. And that will cause then the children to do what? Become a blessing. blessing. Amen. So food, clothing, more food, more clothing. I clear some out. I get some more. I don't take that for granted because I hear God speaking to me that I'm placing you in a position to receive the overflow mm -hmm. because you take what you get. Amen. I had some night and I said, listen, can you use this? Yeah, I can't use that. I said, but you know what we think somebody that is can use it because it's not helping me to store it up. What helps me is as he gives it to me, then I need to also generously become a blessing to someone else. Amen. Now, that ain't a cause for you to be greedy. That's right. But it is a cause to say um, it's called um, sowing, y'all got me, mm -hmm. and reaping. Mm -hmm. If I sow, I reap. But y'all remember the text. You can't reap where you have not sown. That's right. Amen. Well, that's good. Y'all with me? Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. So can I go a little further? So y'all said, well, that's you, but let me read. Read verse 27 right here. I didn't even have it here. Read verse 27. Turn away from evil and do good. All right. What's the prerequisite of, of, of being given generously? Turn away from evil and do good. So shall you dwell forever. And? For the Lord loves justice. He will not forsake his saints. I'm not forsaken, read. They are preserved forever. I'm preserved forever, read. But the children of the wicked shall be cut off. But the wicked shall be cut off. And? The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. Amen. I remember so I used to learn as a child because, you know, when we get upset, we would learn the Bible verses that we, we wanted to say, you know. You know, I use scripture to, to support you. But I certainly remember that scripture, fret not yourself because of evil doers, for they shall soon. Yes. Isn't that what the word said? Mm -hmm. 
Fret not because of evildoers, for they shall soon be cut off. Mm. Hallelujah. Yes, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, Lord, have mercy. Can we go a little bit further? This is a good text tonight. The righteous shall inherit the land and dwell upon it forever. Read. The mouth of the righteous utters wisdom. So my mouth, I pray, utters wisdom. Read. And his tongue speaks justice. And I'm in the justice business. Wow. Read. The law of his God is in his heart. Because his I've hidden his word where? In my heart. heart that I might not sin. And if I hide God's word in my heart, then I get to the next text. His steps do not slip. My steps will not slip. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Read, 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 read. The wicked Lord, watches for the righteous and seeks to put him to death. The wicked wants to see me fall. My Lord. Read. The Lord will not abandon him to his power or let him be, be condemned when he is brought to trial. But the Lord hey, will Baba not Baba abandon. Ooh, There's that word right there. Abandon. The Lord will not abandon him to this power or let him be condemned when he is brought to trial. Amen. So y'all understand this thing called abandonment. Y'all with me? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. Um, on your leisure, you go ahead and you can read Psalm 23. I'm not even going there because we know Psalm 23. But let's go to 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verses 7 through 15. I find myself lately telling people when they want some advice or they're dealing with some issues, go back to the study because I've taught the study on this. Mm -hmm. um, now, each chapter always warns us when you're dealing with these things, you got to know when to seek professional help. But the Lord has given me through this in-depth study something that should help us along our way. So I'm like, go back, because I think if you go back and listen to the word of God, it will help you process some of this stuff. Amen. All right, y'all with me? Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians, all right, 4, verse 7. But we have this treasure in jars of clay to show that the surpassing power belongs to God and not to us. We are afflicted in every way, but not crushed, perplexed, but not driven to despair, mm -hmm. persecuted, but not forsaken, struck down, but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus so that the life of Jesus may also be manifested in our bodies. So this is my mindset. We are treasures to the body. Understanding that the power that I possess does not belong to me, but it belongs to God. As earthen vessels or as fleshly beings, we are afflicted. But yet the power of God is in us working. So every day, the Bible says to die daily. Mm -hmm. So every day, take up your cross and follow me. Those are texts. Those scriptures are in the Bible. But we got to understand, even in the fact of persecution or going through these afflictions, we still have not been abandoned by God because what it looks to you on the outside to be an attack that the Lord is intervening and his power is helping me to overcome these attacks upon my flesh. Because greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. So my experiences on a daily basis is a manifestation of what it looked like for Christ to have suffered persecution, to die on the cross. But remember on the third day he got up. Tell your neighbor I'm getting ready to get up. Hey, mama. Yeah, I'm yeah, getting yeah, ready to get yeah, up. Yeah. Oh, not I will say. Yeah, Though you slay me, yet yeah. will I trust yeah. him. Yeah. I, I will trust not him. succumb to the feeling of abandonment Amen. because what is working in me is taking me to the place that it says, I'm carrying in my body, my flesh, this straw of clay, the death of Jesus, yeah. so that the life of Jesus may be manifested in our bodies. Amen. Why? because the Lord said he captured death and grave and took authority over it. So we got to start taking authority over sickness, 
disease over our minds, over our emotions, over these things that try to hinder us and say, I will no longer feel that God has abandoned me because while death may be working, the power of God is resting. Well, well, well. Death work and power resting. Mm. I'm being empowered in the midst of what I experience. Amen. So sometimes I get hit with left, I get hit with some shots, but I keep trucking, I keep moving, I keep decreeing and declaring that it will not prosper. Amen. 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 All right. Four. For we who live are always being given over to death for Why we don't teach this stuff? So in life, you're going to experience some challenges. Mm -hmm. But yet, so we who live are always experiencing some things. But the life of Jesus overcomes our mortal flesh. Read. So that the life of Jesus also may be manifested in our mortal flesh. And some people have been appointed to suffer Amen. so that you can live. Amen. Amen. All right? Because that's what verse 12 said. So death is at work in us, but life in you. Amen. Since so? We, since we have the same spirit of faith according to what has been written, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we also speak. Knowing that he who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us Somebody also. need to mark that scripture in your Bible. That he who raised Jesus Christ, the Lord, will, also, will, will raise us also with Jesus and bring us with you into his presence. So, so, so the challenges of life should not make you forget that you've been given the gift of eternal life. That's right. Mm. We allow the challenges of life to not only that to make us feel that God has abandoned us, and when you feel that God has abandoned you, what's the next thing you're gonna do? Abandon yeah. God. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all got it. Yep. That's a basic precept. Mm -hmm. When you feel that life has abandoned you, then the next thing you're going to do is abandon God yourself. That's right. So then people start doing foolish things then. Mm -hmm. Just because you got trouble, why are you gonna turn your back on God? Just because you got sickness and disease, why are you going to turn your back on God? Just because God didn't answer when you thought he was going to answer or the way you thought he was going to answer doesn't mean you turn your back on God. That's right. It, it sounds just like, y'all remember that text? I'm not going there tonight, but y'all remember the text that Daniel had a complaint that I prayed to God. And in the midst of my praying, he got told an answer. Oh, yeah, you were praying. But while you were praying, God dispatched us, and we had to go and deal with some stuff. And while we were dealing with some stuff, God heard you the first time you were praying, but he sent me to deal with some stuff so that that stuff wouldn't take your life. Amen. Amen. So, so, so in the midst of what it seems like, God is dealing, and inter he's sending interfering. He, um, y'all know when there's a war, amen, and somebody shoots um, a warhead, they'll send something that would distract the warhead and take it off target. Hallelujah. <laughs> God said, I'm dispatching angels to take some stuff off target. Amen. Then I'm coming against every witch, every warlock. Yes, I'm coming God. against all these Who things that are coming at you, mm -hmm. but I'm going to dispatch them to take them and miss the target because you're still praying. Because you're yeah, still yeah. serving. You're still lifting up my name. You're still doing what I asked you to do. You've been faithful, and I'm going to be faithful over you. Thank Hallelujah. You, oh, yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Amen. So watch this, verse 15. I got to stop with this. Nah, 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 nah. nah. I got to read a little more. Read it. For it is all for your sake, so that as grace extends to more and more people, it may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So you're going through because as God's grace is shown evident in your life, God's forgiveness is shown more in your life, 
God's gift of salvation is evident more in your life, then people are going to continue to give glory to God. They're going to glorify God. Amen. The news I got from my young friend that um, we, we made it through all this stuff, and then all of a sudden they're saying, I see a nodule. We got to go explore the nodule. We got to try to remove the nodule, which means we're going to remove part of your lungs. But in the midst of them going in there, God ran an interference on it and says, oh, it ain't even in the lungs. It's in the yeah, muscle. Well, well. Here's Shabbat. Amen. Glory to God. Mm. Glory to God. Hallelujah. More and more people are glory. You know, only God could do that. Only God. Glory. So what I'm going through, amen, there are many who are increasing with thanksgiving and saying the doctor said the cancer was rare and the person would probably not survive, but God continues to let them live. Yes, God. Oh, glory to God. Oh, yes. I'm living, hey, God, thank you. Hallelujah. Yes. Glory to God. Yes. I seen yes. two people today. Can I go back to the hurricane? I seen two people who were working, and they said they had to walk 13 miles across the, sometimes they had the shoes in the hand and socks on their feet, amen, to try to make it, and God brought them to safety and they're back home. Glory to God. There are millions who may not make it, but thank God they were one of them that did. Amen. And so we got to celebrate God because we know only God could let them travel through that place where Ooh. when they put their feet, it felt like sinking sand. Yeah, but I feel God. like my help is coming tonight. But on Christ the solid rock I stand. All, All other ground. ground. Amen. It may have been mud. It may have been seeking. But on Christ the solid rock. Oh, yes. Hallelujah. Jesus is my rock. Yes, he is. Hallelujah. Yes, he is. Amen. Thank God we're glorified. These things happen, but we give glory back to God. And now it's, it's evident. But when, what happens when the roads open up? Can we then find a time that we want to go and just wash and clean and do what we do? Mm. This thing to me is just as devastating as any other disaster could be. Amen. So we got to do it. But watch this. The reason why we got to keep moving, tell your neighbor, keep moving, keep, moving. keep, serving, keep serving, keep believing, keep, believing. keep trusting, yes, keep God. moving, serving, believing, trusting, keep trusting, believing, moving, serving. Amen. Whatever, all of those things come in place. Serving, moving, believing, trusting, believing, moving, serving, moving, serving, moving, 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 moving. We've been called to serve. Amen. Amen. So do, wow, so give we, glory to God, but do. So we do not lose heart. Don't you give up. You can't lose heart. Don't lose. Somebody has lost heart. Mm. They wonder how much more can I bear? But you asked that question a while back, and God has still allowed you to do yes. it. Yes, yes. I'm still serving. So do not lose heart. I thought about something. Can I give God praise for it? Mm -hmm. About how we get the bread. Amen. I give him praise for it. But we got so much cheese now that if I can't get you any food, I can get you some cheese and some bread. Mm -hmm. I got some provolone, some Swiss, and some medium cheddar. And you put it between that bread. Amen. And you put it in the pan. Hallelujah. I can even give you a little bit of blessing. Or I might not have butter, but take some olive oil. And you can fry you down a grilled cheese sandwich. Amen. Amen. It's cold enough to get a little bit of grilled cheese and a can of soup. Amen. That's a meal right there. Amen. 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 Get a can of chicken noodle soup so you have some chicken, you have some noodles, <laughs> some cheese, and some bread. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. And I think back when I was growing up, how we made sandwiches. Amen. Back then, they were scared to put mayonnaise on the sandwich because it was going all day. You didn't have refrigeration. Amen. But we would make sandwiches. We put that cheese on some bread and we there eat cheese sandwiches. Won't no bologna in it. Won't no turkey in it. No ham in it. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. So we don't lose heart. Though really? our though our outer self is wasting away, our inner self is being renewed day by day. For for this light momentary affliction is preparing us. For an eternal weight of glory beyond all comparison. <laughs> Verse 18. As we look not to the things that are seen, but to the things that are unseen. For the things that are seen Tell are your neighbor, transient. quit looking at what you see. Mm -hmm. Because when you continue to look at what you see, what you see is what you get. Well, well, well. Hmm? 
For the things that are seen are transient, but the things that are unseen are eternal. And transient means they're changing. So it may look one way today, mm -hmm. but it'll look different tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Or someone may see it as one way, and somebody else may see it as a different way. So the things that are seen is transient. It's sort of like this. The things that are seen are in the eye of the beholder. Mm -hmm. I, know, I hope this has blessed you. This teaching has blessed me tonight. Amen. So, so what I see is what I perceive with my natural eye. Mm -hmm. But we got to understand the things we don't see are eternal. So instead of laying hold to what my eyes perceive, mm -hmm. what I need to lay hold to is trusting, Amen. healing, Victory. What are my eyes laying hold to? The Spirit of the Lord encompass and comes in me, the hope of glory. Mm -hmm. That's what I see. The what I see, I can't see the Spirit of God at work. Mm -hmm. Amen. The Bible said God is a spirit, mm -hmm. and they that worship Him. Yeah. So all these people talking about I'm looking to see God. He already translated to you that I am a what? Spirit, and they that worship me must worship me in spirit sp and, and in truth. truth. We got the spirit. We act like we got the spirit, but if you ain't truth about it, you ain't got truth. You ain't got the spirit. You just saying. <laughs> worship involves spirit and truth. That's right. Hmm. And so it is. I thank God for the word. Mm -hmm. Amen. Y'all, y'all with me on this thing called abandonment? knowing that we really understand as we look to the things that are seen versus not seen, all right? All right, can I help us? Let's go to 2 Corinthians 5 and 7. Amen. Just real, real quick so I can close us out. For we walk by faith, not by sight. We walk by faith and not by sight. All right, we walk by faith. And walk by, not by sight. All right, so let's go to John 20, 29. Y'all with me? We're going to walk it. We're going to walk it tonight. We walk by faith and not by sight. John 20. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Y'all got it? Now let's read on just a little bit for that. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book. So some of the signs have not been written. Remember I told you I was going to teach a lesson on signs, wonders, and miracles. I, I didn't forget. I really did. But when I started to study it and kind of got into it, I discovered something. And I still got to unpack that. But I discovered something. What are miracles? Signs and wonders. What are signs? Miracles and wonders. What are wonders? Miracles and signs. We use that word signs, wonders, and miracles, mm. but based on what I've been able to ascertain this far, we may be talking about one and the same. something that I can't explain. So what seemed to be simple has now become perplexing because what I thought it was may not necessarily be what I perceived it to be. And the more I read this text tonight, and I know we're talking about abandonment, but the problem is we feel abandoned because of what we perceive with our eyes. We never do a spiritual check to discern. That's what we need is a spirit called discernment. Mm -hmm. And maybe in the gift of discernment, trying to explore all of this stuff may not be explorable to some extent because then you've over discerned what you've discerned because you've now tried to place in your terms what are now what are in spiritual terms. Mm -hmm. There's some things that I look to find out that ain't found out by my look, it's found out by revelation. So revelation is greater than what we think we see with our eyes. So tonight, I've given you a revelation, 
and I really haven't gotten into abandonment. Most of the time, the one abandonment, we're going to talk about different forms of abandonment, but the most abandonment that we need to fear is how often and how quickly do we abandon the things of God. My Lord. We abandon each other. We abandon those relationships. They all talked about it in the text. But, but our text next week, week after next, I'm sorry, because next week I, I, when we will not have midweek manna. But our text, next time we come together, it's going to explore three chapters, and I want you to read it. And I want you to think about all the times of abandonment, Matthew 26, Matthew 27, and Matthew 28. Mm-hmm. And I want you to look at abandonment. And many of us are just at like the disciples. All right? So... He did many other signs of present disciples that are not written. But verse 31 says what? But these are written so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Amen. People do not have life. We're living, but I really believe living is different from having life. Mm-mm. Again, I preached a while back about surviving but thriving while I'm surviving. Too many of us are surviving, but we're not thriving. Right. Some, some of us are not thriving because you don't even log on to the to, to, uh oh. <laughs> how many opportunities? We can we can say that I don't know how to do that technology, but but you do Facebook. Well. So how can you do Facebook and not do church book? <laughs> this stuff is available. But we're not getting it because we don't take advantage of it. And I understand everybody's not young, but then we offer classes on how to learn how to do it, and we don't come to that. So I'm not even on a tangent. It's like people will follow their hearts. And if your heart doesn't lead you to try to grow in Christ and be willing to grow a different way than you've grown before, then I can't do a thing about it. Nope. That's a good place to be right now. All right, let me, let me make sure I've covered what I need to cover. Yeah. I think that's a good place to be. All right. Can I go back to Second Corinthians, the fifth chapter? Let's look at verse nine. I want to stay there. So whether we are at home or away, we make it our aim to please him. What is your aim tonight? Is your aim to please God? Or is your aim to satisfy and get gratification and satisfaction for things you desire? Mm -hmm. What is my aim? All right. All right. Okay. Okay. Give me me five minutes. Colossians 1 and 10. This is just good to me. So as to walk in a manner worthy of the Lord... Fully pleasing to him. Are we fully pleasing to God? Read. Bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Bearing fruit in every good work and increasing in the knowledge of God. Yeah, I got to write that one down. Uh, y'all got me? Mm-hmm. Um, bearing fruit in every good work, increasing in the knowledge of God. All right. All right, y'all with me? Let's read a little bit more. Being strengthened with all power, according to his glorious might, for all endurance and patience with joy. Read. Giving thanks to the Father who has qualified you to share in the inheritance of the saints in light. We cannot be saintly in darkness. Read on. He has delivered us from the domain of darkness. So I need to be delivered from the sphere and domain of darkness. Read. 
and transferred us to the kingdom of his beloved son. And that kingdom is a kingdom of light. Yes. Amen. I, I can't even get into it tonight. We have got to be changed. Right. I've been changed. Not what I used to be. And if there's anything else, we want manifestation, but the manifestation is not going to come if you continue to play in darkness. Well, my Lord. We got to be, we are children of the light. Amen. Woo, this word is good to me. All right. Um, um, all right. All right. All right, First Thessalonians four and one. Let me come in. Finally, then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you receive from us how you ought to walk and to please God, just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. Can I stop right there tonight? Once you achieve where you think you are. What does this text tell us to do? Do it, do it more, more and, and more. more. Walk in the light more and more. more. Live in the light more, more and more. Do the works in the light more and more. Amen. Amen. Wow. 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 Read verse 2 real quick. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. We gave you teaching, read. For this is the will of God, your sanctification. Right there. I ain't going any further. I'm going to stop right there. That's the process we don't talk about. Is what? Sanctification. They don't talk about that. Mm -mm. Everybody gets saved. We got the Holy Ghost. But nobody wants to be sanctified. Amen. Sanctification is the process by which we are walking in the light of Christ. Amen. Sanctification. Amen. I pray tonight that this word has been a blessing to each of you. And as you focus on the word of God, let me remind each of you that every day should be a day of thanksgiving. And every day we ought to desire to do more and more for Christ. Amen. Only what we do for Christ will last. And so some of us are feeling abandoned, not because Christ abandoned us. We're feeling abandoned because we abandoned Christ. And amen. 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 All right. So I ask you to be in prayer. This is something I did not send out, but I want you to be in prayer as the body of Christ. This weekend, they will bury one of my beloved sons and, and, and one of God's beloved children, Brother Jarrell Pridgen, um, at Turner Memorial Church with family hour at 10 a.m. and his service at 11 a.m. That is available on Zoom. We will send out a Zoom link for those who wish to join on Zoom. That service will take place this Saturday. There are some who are traveling. Please pray for traveling mercies that people go to and fro to that destination. And I will send also another text out that will list to you some of the items that we need to put in these cleaning buckets. There are certain sponges they're requesting, certain disinfectants, if not, not a particular brand, but certain things. And we may very well have the disinfectant here at the church. The, a disinfectant solution that's here that might be helpful for that day um, to go in these buckets um, and um, other things that dishwashing liquid insect repellent and different things that they they're asking that they be placed within these um, these cleanup buckets and what has happened is a thousand of them have been ordered um, for the Christian church um, in North Carolina to take to uh, Western Carolina and parts of South Carolina we have churches that are there as well and there are other people there and um, what they're asking is that we 
um, send those, they're sending those to us to send, and we're going to replenish the supply. So um, um, each church have been asked to do some, and so I have a goal for a new generation, so I will send that out um, for us as we attempt to be a blessing to those in the western part of the state. Although Really, it's not guaranteed that it will go there, but it will go what they're sending there will go there and that it will be a blessing um, to those who are recovering from disaster. So thank you all. I ask you to continue to pray. Let's continue to pray for our church family. Pray for um, Brother Jarrell's family. He has family in Wilmington, North Carolina, and his wife and children are in Maryland and church family up there. So let's continue to lift all of those people up as we go forth in the name of Jesus. Um, and we may send another distribution out. We were able to bless several people last night with gallons of milk, and I have some that are still left. Amen. So hopefully for those that might come through tomorrow in their choir practice, we can bless you with milk. That date goes through the 9th of October, so that's a good date. So be blessed, and we pray that God keep you and strengthen you in all that you're doing. As I always say, if you forget me, you haven't forgotten much. But if you forget God, you've forgotten everything. Take the Lord with you everywhere you go. Blessings to each of you. Good night. Do your thing. Woke me up.